welcome back to Contextual Electronics. This episode is about actually creating and also modifying symbols to add a, a slightly more complex character to them. And we'll get into this as we as we go along. So let's load up the uh, library editor, which is part of EE Schema. Load up the bare project we've been using here. Load up the library editor. All right, and we're in the library editor. So what we're going to do here is, is first we're going to actually modify a part, and then we're going to talk about why it's better to probably not modify a part in the first place. And we'll kind of see this as we go along. The part that I'm going to use is actually the LM324, which is an op amp. It's a quad op amp, so there's four actual op amps within a single package. It's a 14-pin package. So uh, it is in the, oops, sorry, that's the viewer. We need to actually open the library, and it is in the linear uh, default KiCad library. And we'll open the part here. And there we go. All right, and we can see that because the, how the numbering is here, you see 1, 2, 3, 4, 11, you can kind of notice that it's not necessarily what you'd expect here because you'd think this would be 5, and maybe it's a, if it was a 6-pin part total, maybe this would be 5 or 6. But because it's 11, that also cues, clues you into the fact that this is actually a multi-part uh, a symbol. So we can see here is if we pull to the pull down, we do different parts here. We can see that the pin numbers change, but also we should notice that even though the pin numbers on the non-inverting input, the inverting input, and the output all change, and as do the uh, the the reference designator, the power pins plus V plus and V minus do not change, and so that is an important distinction. So let's say we want to actually uh, add. Add a separate block. Sometimes for cleanliness, you want to add a block that's in a different place here. So if you wanted to have, so so as as we see it now, each each op amp actually needs to have power connected to it. You need to hook up a V plus and a V minus for each and every op amp. Now in the actual physical chip, you only have to hook up power once. You're only going to hook it up to pins four and eleven once. And so sometimes for cleanliness, people like to have an entirely separate block just for the power. And especially as you get into really complex components, like digital components that have many, many power inputs, such as like an FPGA, and they have different power rails, you can set up entire parts in the schematic symbol that are just power. And that also helps to kind of separate by function, whereas maybe the pin numbers on a complex FPGA might be, for a, a voltage input, might be you know pins 20, pins 34, pins 57, and, and so on. Uh, you know, they would be normally spread out along the chip, but if you actually wanted to have a symbol, you could have it all in the same place. So first thing we're going to do, we're actually going to go into the properties here. We're going to options, and then we're going to up this, oops, from four to five. So this allows us to actually have a fifth part here. And you see this actually just copied part A. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go in and we're going to make sure that all of the parts are, uh, so, they're not drawn between the different parts individually. So what we need to do is actually edit the pins. So we mouse over the pins, we hit E, and you see here, right in this section, it says shared by all parts of the component. So we want to actually get rid of that. And what that's going to do is it's going to leave this pin on part E, but then if we go to other parts, it's actually gone. And that works out well because we're going to actually turn part E into the voltage ones anyways. So we'll do the same thing down here. Shared part or sh shared by all parts of the component that's not true anymore. So we're going to leave this here. And then we'll double check here as well. You see that this is not shared by all parts of the component. Uh, and so what we can try and try being the key word is we'll try deleting it and let's see what happens on the other parts here. You see that in the this actually ended up it also deleted the parts or the pin on other components as well. So let's go back and let's undo that. What we need to do here is actually go back into the options and then say parts are locked. And you can see this little pop up here. And what that's going to do is it's going to allow us to remove these here. And then as we go to part D, you see that they actually did stay for all these other parts. So that is what we wanted there. Now, the other part is the actual body of the component. Now, if we, you have to find out where the actual drawing point is for where the drawing started on this component, but I have to know it's the bottom left corner here. 
So if I mouse over it and hit E, you can see that this also is shared by all parts in the component. So what we're going to actually do is go to part A, because if I if I dis, uh, deselected that now, we would keep this uh, triangle op amp looking shape here, and we actually want to have it as a separate shape. So what we're going to do is we're going to just go back to part A, we'll do the same thing, and then what it's going to do is it's just going to assign this, this shape to part A. We can see part B, it's actually gone. Now, I haven't actually figured out any other way to do this. This is just kind of a... Um, it's something you have to deal with. And so what we'll do is we'll actually just go through really quickly and it's good practice for drawing component shapes. So we right click, we edit, we fill the background, and it looks just the same. We do this two more times. I happen to know that uh, it's two, uh, you can see this is actually two grid lines above. I've drawn this a couple times now. And so I know that uh, you know, this is going to be the same shape. And you want that because you just want it to be kind of uniform. You don't want one to look out of, out of the ordinary, especially if they are supposed to be the same shape. And if you do have something where all of the, you know, if it's just op amps, right, if you're going to, if you're going to keep it as it originally is, then you can obviously have the same shape across your entire, all your parts. Fill background. Oops. forgot to close that first. And fill background. There we go. All right. So we have A, B, C, D. Now we have E, and you can see this is broken. There's no th nothing there at least. And so we're gonna just do the same thing here. We're gonna draw just a simple power box. It doesn't matter what it actually looks like. Fill the background. And now this is nice, and this is what I was talking about before. When we actually drop this into our diagram, we'll see that we can just hook up power once now, and that really helps to clean up the schematic. It actually, it, it uh, you know, it could get a little confusing because now you say, oh, why aren't there any power pins? You know, if you're used to looking at op amps that have power pins here. Um, but again, it's just a preference thing, and that's just one reason to do it like that. So let's, uh, we'll s oops, not, not save, we'll save it as a different part rather. Create a new component from the current one, and what we'll do is we'll call this LM324-2 just because it's a second version of this. All right. Now let's actually uh, select a... Uh, we can just stay in the same library, actually. So we're just going to start a new component. This is just going to get rid of this. We should. We just saved it, so... Um, and let's just call this test component. doesn't matter, really. I know, not a, not a great name, but we're going to... Uh, list three parts here and uh, we're gonna have non swappable parts and that uh, that actually allows for you know um, basically what that means is and, and this is what we had to select the last time as well it means that basically you can have differently shaped parts and you can have different pin layouts and that's really useful because it allows you to have a lot of different shapes um, but what it does mean is that once you're actually in a schematic if you wanted to move from you know part A to part B, it's not going to allow you to do that anymore. It's actually going to break those connections, and you'll have to reroute your your uh, lines to it. In the layout in the layout package, it's not a big deal, but in the schematic, those lines are going to be broken. You have to just make sure those connections are remade. All right, so we have a brand new symbol here, and we can just draw a simple shape. Edit it to fill in the back. Move the components here. As we always do, we mouse over it, hit M, select which one we want. Oops, I actually move this one down here, and then the reference designator up here. And as we talked about in, in previous videos, if you want to move the anchor, you can move the anchor over here as well. And now we can just start adding pins. Um, but the nice thing is, once we do add a pin, so we'll say, in put one my name my numbering scheme needs to uh, improve <laughs> uh, we will uh, drop this here and put two two left and 
Now we can actually move to part B, and we see it's an entire. It, it still gives this um, this ref does here, but we can have an entirely different part. And this is really nice for, like I said, when you're doing a digital component and you want something very, very complicated. Uh, we can look at a real quick example of this. I'm just going to ask if I want to. I didn't want to do that, but uh, oh, where's my Circuit Hub library? We're going to open a new component. Yes, we're going to discard those changes. Look at what's in here. And then this is one we've talked about before, but you see that this is actually generated from Circuit Hub. But uh, we can actually swap through the parts, and you can see they're, they're significantly different. And uh, we'll probably have a different segment in contextual electronics about Circuit Hub specifically. But uh, needless to say, when you're, when you're working with parts that are this, this uh, complicated, things can get confusing very quickly, and you want to have good naming and everything else. Um, so it is an important thing to understand the complex signals and, and how you can modify them. And I'd say in, in most cases, especially with digital signals, you're going to want it so that they're non-swappable parts, and you can modify them so that they have lots of different layouts, as this one does. All right, uh, one last thing. Let's actually look at dropping these parts in this the schematic editor real quick, because this is important as well, just to look at that swappable characteristic. So we'll hit A to drop a part. List all. We're going to get a linear library. We'll go to LM324. And this is this is the one we started with, actually. And the thing that it's important here is that these swappable parts, if we hit C and then we actually create more parts here, you see that it actually is creating more of the same. Zoom down a little bit. Zoom back in. You see all of these are the same pin number and everything. And if we drop this on a, a layout right now, it would actually try and put down four separate packages. So four different, I think these are DIP14 standard in uh, KiCad at least. So we put down four different DIP14 packages. Now if we wanted to use all four of the op amps on a single DIP package, and we'll talk more about this in layout, what we do is we, we edit component, we choose the unit, switch to B, you see the pin numbers change, same things here. We go to edit component, unit, C, and finally edit component, unit, and this is where that swappability really comes in because if these if if I had placed those first letter a ones and we wanted to swap them between you know uh, if we wanted this one to become C and this one to become B and this one to become D uh, it would actually break those connections and that that could be annoying uh, but there are like I like we said earlier there are benefits especially for the cleanliness of your schematic if you want to have it so that you you know you basically trade swappability for cleanliness on your schematic and now we see that since there is an A, oh, that one didn't make it. Uh, let's see. <laughs> this one is supposed to be B, C, here we go, and D. So now if we actually uh, annotate the schematic, You see that all of these became U one D U one oh it swapped them for me U one A U one B and U one C, and we the important thing is that it all was on the same part they're all U one so if you only wanted to have one DIP fourteen package on your layout that's going to allow it to happen. All right, so we'll uh, look more at complex symbols as we you know move into other units and especially in session one as we actually start using complex symbols and we want to create our own footprints for it. Thanks for watching.